Let's now explore NFS implementation. NFS stands for Network File System. It was invented by Sun Microsystems and it allows you to provide transparent access to remote file system or systems using a network. So it features transparent access to remote file systems. In other words, remote file systems are merged or remote exports are merged into your local directory tree at various mount points and become a part of your local directory structure, which means applications can take advantage of those mount points. And in most cases, the mount points are truly transparent to the applications making use of the, uh, of the mount point using I.O. So if an application needs to read or write, it may not know that the mount point is indeed across a network accessible via NFS. So how is NFS implemented on a Red Hat Enterprise system? Well, from the shell, on our remote system, Linux CVT Serve 4, since it has a later code, we'll RPM query all grep I NFS, and this will return the NFS utilities packages, the library, as well as utils. An RPM query list, NFS utils, includes utilities that help us to determine the status of NFS on local and remote systems. It also includes the user space NFS program which allows us to export as well as mount remote file systems. Scrolling through we see an ETC sysconfig NFS entry. A brief look at that will give us a sense for what startup options are permitted and if you browse you'll see options related to the levels of NFS supported, the versions, and other options where the quotas should be turned on, starting ports for connectivity as NFS is an RPC or a dynamically driven service port-wise. The locking and status managers, so these two binaries handle locking of files as well as status information. The, um, the mount NFS and version 4 drivers for actually performing mounts. So when you run the mount command followed by a remote path which leads to an NFS exported share or directory, the NFS4 or NFS driver handles the mount for you. And other useful utilities. So basically NFS support is provided by default and we simply need to export or mount exports to take advantage of it. Install by default uses RPC for communications amongst many other features. Let's set up some tasks here for exporting as well as mounting a remotely exported directory. So our first task will be to export a directory on the server. To do so, we'll modify the exports file. This file contains the directories that are to be exported to your user community. Let's navigate to etc. And the default file has nothing. However, we can populate it using entries such as the following. The path to directory, followed by an IP address or host name, followed by parentheses, and in between the parentheses we define the options that are to be associated with the exported path, such as whether or not it should be read-only, read-write, and so on. You can define rules on a per IP address or subnet basis by indicating the IP addresses on multiple lines or on the same line. Either case, or in either case, NFS will parse the multiple entries for a given export and set up its ACL or access control list accordingly. Now we'll substitute our path to directory with a directory that we've yet to create named NFS1. So forward slash NFS1 will be made available 
to 192.168.75.10 in read-write mode. Let's go ahead and copy this entry. And on our local system, we'll make a directory at the root, calling it NFS1. And then we'll modify the exports file to make this item available. So this simple entry will be read by the NFS service to mean that if the client, the connecting client has an IP address of 192.168.75.10, permit read write access. We'll save the changes. And in ETC init, if we take a look, there's an NFS entry, as well as an NFS lock entry. A check config list NFS reveals that it's off in all run levels, so let's go ahead and turn it on in run levels 3 and 5. And attempt to start the service and confirm that it is indeed exporting forward slash NFS. So we'll service NFS start. And when you start NFS, it starts any required daemons such as the quota manager, the main daemon itself, and mount D, which handles the mounting of remote exports. So now PSCF grep I NFS will reveal that multiple instances are indeed running. So step two, or step three that is, formally step two, is to make directory forward slash NFS one. Next step is to start NFS server using service NFS start. And then we need to confirm again that the server is indeed exporting the directories or directory that we've told it to export. There's a command that can be used to confirm as such. It's called export FS. So it's option E. Confirm export or exports using export FS with the, ver the verbose or V option. This will enumerate any directories that are currently exported by the server. It also enumerates any permissions or any defaults. We've indicated read-write. The root is squash, but if you indicate no root squash, then a remote user's equivalent permissions when connecting to the share will be root when it's mounted as root, of course, as well as some other entries that you can get by, or find out more about by using man and NFS. But for example, those users who do not translate directly to a user mapped in ETC password on the host system will be set to anonymous user ID. We should just note that NFS matches remote clients UID or remote users UID to determine so it matches UID to local ETC password to determine ACLs. So if a user has an ID of 150 on the client system and attempts to write to a directory that's exported using NFS, if a user with the ID 150 exists on the host system, the host NFS system, then the permissions will be equivalent. But if there is no match, as is the case oftentimes, the user will be matched to the anonymous user ID, which is reserved as 65,534, which is like the anonymous user in most operating systems having very little privileges. Sometimes this is not the ideal way to export a directory. Sometimes it's more ideal to not squ squash root and to not set unknown users to the anonymous UID. But this setting, anonymous UID and root squash, these two settings are done to increase the security, to enhance the security posture of the NFS daemon, as it will allow anyone who has the right connecting IP to mount and potentially make irreparable changes to the export. Now let's go ahead and export another directory, just to have it reflected using export FS. We'll make directory NFS2. We'll modify 
the exports file. And in this case, we'll allow the same host to connect, 7510, but this time the user will be restricted to read only writes. You may update your exports without restarting the NFS server.